today with Jamie Lee Mock, uh, who is with Moomber Tonic Co. And uh, to give you a little bit of background about Slow Time Movement, just uh, before we jump in here, Slow Time Movement is um, a movement dedicated to living a life with presence, ease, and freedom every single day. So our focus is really on connection and connection with ourselves through nourishing ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, what we eat, what we think. And secondly, nourishing connections with others. So really that vulnerability and humanity that comes from uh, connecting with others authentically and truly in, in a real way. And thirdly, uh, connecting with something bigger than ourselves. So it could be the environment, nature, universe, spirit, God, whatever it is, it is that speaks to you. And really we're seeking to reinvent how we get present so that we can connect more at a fundamental level. And I'm here with Jamie and I would love for her to uh, give you an introduction about what her business is all about and what she is. Hey everyone, I'm Jamie. Thanks Christy for having me. Um, I started Moon Brew Tonic uh, as I finished school at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition as a holistic nutritionist. I, you know, was, was coaching people and that didn't necessarily resonate with me. And, and so I worked uh, with ways, mainly intuition and, and things that sort of guided me to um, exactly where I needed to be. And in that, I was brewing kombucha and started a business brewing June, which is very similar, but it's brewed with honey instead of a refined sugar. And so once I started brewing that and um, noticing how I felt and also realizing the health benefits between, um, you know, having honey instead of refined sugar and kombucha, I just, I truly felt amazing. And I felt as though I, I needed to share. So I started Moon Brew Tonic and it has truly evolved already. Um, we're now brewing in a commercial kitchen space and each of our brews are seasonal. So we're also using uh, medicinal herbs and botanicals that we often get to harvest ourselves. Oh my gosh. And um, I must say that like I, Jamie and I don't live in the same city anymore and I just cannot wait until her distribution is coming to Vancouver Island because I would drink her June over any kombucha any day. <laughs> it is delicious. <laughs> and so the reason that we're having this interview, at least from the perspective of like slow time movement, is really connecting with other businesses, people and brands who are value aligned with what we're creating. And where I see, and Jamie, you can elaborate on this, where I see the the uh, connection here is like how we nourish ourselves and i know that that is a big piece of what you do because it's not only about like the, the actual product that you make but also there's something beyond the physical about how it nourishes as well absolutely and one thing when i when i first started and people often ask why moon brew and i always or like why moon and why the name and so i always felt a strong connection to the moon which is a piece of it but also when you drink something like June or kombucha, um, you have that subtle awareness, which I truly think people get at the time of the full moon as well. You kind of realize, oh, I'm feeling a little bit off, or I feel great, or my energy is a little bit different. And um, you kind of get that sense of awareness too when you drink um, something with all the benefits like June. And so I really wanted to have that be a, an integral piece because I feel like when you're drinking something like that, especially when the ingredients are coming from such an amazing place of, of being harvested with love and with people that are, um, you know, really in tune with nature and what they're doing, you really feel that connection to yourself, to others, to nature, and just the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I like I love that you forage, and I know that's where you and I. Um, you know, have so many things in common in terms of our love of going out and foraging. And I think that's such a grounding activity. And then we talk about connection to spirit or nature or um, something of the like, that's also what your product does. Like it allows us to actually connect with the environment and go out and be on the land and be in nature and like identify and look for different plants and herbs and understand what they do and what they can do for our bodies and that like that 
natural symbiosis that occurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. And even if, you know, you can't get out to forage or the knowledge isn't there, at least um, the, the June or the product itself will be able to perhaps like spark that, that want or that, that feel that, you know, okay, I'm going to get back out into nature, or at least you can, you can feel a little bit closer because you know that the ingredients you're getting have been harvested from locally sourced um, places around, around BC. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you more about kind of the larger vision. You've told us a bit about the vision of Moon Britonic and what's that really larger vision about why this business? Thank you for asking that question. I love this question because I think for me, especially something that has been so integral and one of the biggest reasons as to, you know, leaving a corporate environment to start this business was community. Especially when I finished school, I didn't feel there was um, an open community for me to just step right in. Like it wasn't open arms and, and I feel as though that needs to be created and I, and I want to make that too and, and create a place where it's comfortable for people to, you know, meet their farmers and, you know, get out to forage and understand where their food comes from, but it doesn't have to feel like it's, you know, a club or that that's restricted to only certain people who know certain things or who know others. And that's, you know, it's, it, I don't want it to be a, a thing where it's, restricted and want it to be open to everyone and everyone to have that a piece of of that feeling of community and really feeling connected yeah that's awesome i love that um how do you how do you see yourself building out that community uh for me right now it's it's really getting to know on a smaller scale because i am only one person but getting to know the farmers and actually working with them in conjunction so, for example, we get a lot of our herbs from uh, Hastings Urban Farm and uh, Hives for Humanity, who work in conjunction, and Frisch Farms. So we've gotten to know these people on a personal level. I can definitely say they are now some of my friends, and it's been amazing to work with them. And so I think, you know, not just buying a product to then sell, but being able to really establish these relationships and connections, first and foremost, really build such a strong community. And... The more people you know, the more people you get in touch with, and it's like this this ongoing thing where then your network expands and then this community evolves. Yeah. And that's so exciting to me, especially because I find a lot of people I'm now working with are just as excited and maybe a little bit crazy about um, awesome food and local and sustainable um, uh, like food and beverage. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love that because like it's all about like your product not only um is healthy physically for us and like replenishing that good gut bacteria, but it's also that like larger connection to I mean really it encompasses like connection to ourselves, connection to others through community, through all the different sourcing and bringing people together, and then connection to the environment. Like it really is all three. Definitely. And I think that even for me, like that, that's really important to me, but um, I think it is even in conjunction to slow time. And I think that's really neat because between the two of us, let's say I'm offering a product and you're offering a service, but they do meet in the middle with that, that connection piece to yourself, to others, to the community. And I think that's, that's really important, even going back to the community piece and establishing that because businesses that are aligned can then come together and create this, this more magical, you know, community of people that get together that are all really connected. Yeah. Well, and ultimately we get to be these agents of change as well. And I know that you and I talked about that uh, beforehand because ultimately with so time movement, like I, we want to be one of the impetus or like the, the thing that we can shift how we view ourselves, how we view connection, how we view, how we interact with each other, ourselves, the universe. And that is exactly what you're up to too. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I think right now there is a shift going on in regard to 
starting businesses or getting involved with things that are more conscious, let's say. So that's definitely happening. And I think, um, you know, to be a part of it and to really move through that, even though totally scary at times, 95% of the time, I have no idea what I'm doing and we just do it anyways. I think you can attest to that as well. Um, and just going for it so that this sort of the shift can, can happen and that more people can be involved and really, um, you know, follow their dreams and, and not be overwhelmed by them and just being able to, to, to go after it and do it and, and, you know, not be scared of the unknowns. Well, absolutely. Yeah. That, that entrepreneurial, um, mindset that comes from being, um, like stepping out and being like, I have no idea how this is going to go. And like, mm -hmm. this is the next, this is an, a next step and let's see how it evolves and how it shifts. And I think that's kind of one of the markers of people who are doing socially conscious work and who are thinking about things differently and looking at the systems in our world and seeing where they aren't working anymore, where they've reached their edge and are starting to go like, how do we create something different? And that shift, that's exactly what, you know, our company is about and what you're about as well is like, how do we actually start to do things differently? Mm -hmm. And this is us. Yeah. Differently. <laughs> and taking those first steps and seeing what happens and seeing how it evolves. Like we don't know exactly what it's going to look like in two months, six months, a year. Exactly. That's part of the thrill of it and part of the fear. <laughs> A huge piece. Um, that is almost all of it. I feel like every day, you know, sure, we have our to-do list, but at the same time, you know, being conscious beings and, and being in tune with ourselves, we also have, you know, gut feelings and intuition that we we have to trust and follow as well. So, yes, we can look at our priority list or our to-do list, but if something feels off, like, it's really important to listen to that as well which for me has led me in a million different directions, but always to the place where I need to be, which is really, really cool. Um, also can be very difficult, but 110% worth it. Awesome. Wow. I also um, wanted to ask you though, because I know this is the first interview um, and I just want people to know also more about slow time because I get so excited about it. But what for you um, creates change and what about slow time will create change uh, for others? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good question. Uh, so the shift that I see that really inspired me is definitely focused on health and then became a much broader. So I feel like right now in our society we are burning out we are on like kind of these creatures that are just in these cycles and there's not much thought process that's going in we're kind of just doing the things we know how to do and the change that I really want to see on the fundamental core level is for people to stop and to start you know having that reflection time or um, that time to say like what do I actually think how do I think this actually should go and be able to make those decisions so how that relates back to some time is like establishing times in your day where you can have presence and where you can stop and where you can slow things down a bit so you can have time to actually intentionally create what's next rather than just being on the treadmill and going from the next things to the next thing until you you burn out or whatever else is that um, happens as a consequence and so that's the shift like that's the like probably one of the core things that I really want to see change and be the change. And my expression of that is really through a uh, connection like I talked about before and um, health and wellness, being um, connected with others and being connected with nature in ways that are different than what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's so important. I love it. I love it so much. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Well, thanks. <laughs> Um, well, this has been so wonderful. And before we go off, I realized that we didn't say that you're in Vancouver. And where yes. can you find your products? So right now, we're actually just working through all of the Vancouver Coastal approval. So nowhere specifically until August 1st, in which I'll be rolling out the locations and markets that Moonbrew Tonic will be available. Uh, we have two seasonal flavors right now. So I'm working with a blueberry barrage, which is beautiful. 
and then a raspberry sage rose. So those will be the two that'll take us through until probably fall, and then they'll switch up again. Um, but be sure to check the website, Instagram, everything's moonbrewtonic.ca or at moonbrewtonic, and that's when I'll be rolling out, or that's where I'll be rolling out all of the, the locations to come. Amazing. Oh, I can't wait to try. I've tried the um, the sage one, the sage with, which is it? Rose. I haven't tried it with the rose. I think it was sage raspberry at that iteration. Yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, it's so delicious. Um, <laughs> and if you want to hear more about slow time movement, you can hop on over to our Facebook group. We've got a private Facebook community to discuss all things that you have heard today and much more. And uh, you can go, it's facebook.com slash group slash slow time movement. And you can catch up with us there. Thank you again, Jamie, for being my first interview and for having this conversation with me. It's so lovely to connect with you. You too, as always. Thank you.